Are you ready to take your business to the next level and make the money you want so that you can create the impact you desire? Then you're in the right place. It's possible to run a successful business built around your life. Get ready for a little bit of tough love and a whole lot of strategy to grow your business without sacrificing your sanity. If you're ready to get out of your own way and step into the role of CEO, then let's go. I'm Amy Traw, and this is the Motivated CEO Podcast. Today, I am chatting with Jess all about how to get past the most common roadblock I see in you mompreneurs. And this is something I've been guilty of as well. And that is showing up and taking action. And once you master this, I will tell you what, business gets easier. It gets fun. It excites you instead of pulling you down. So I know today's conversation is going to be absolutely incredible. So with that being said, Jess, welcome into the podcast. Thanks, girl. I'm so excited to be here. And I'm even more excited that we decided on this topic because I feel it's so relevant, especially at the end of the year. Oh my gosh. Yes, definitely. Especially while we're all like, okay, I'm going to totally redo everything for 2024 and all of the things, you know, I feel like the new year, we always get that excitement, but we're really going to dive into, okay, let's, let's keep that momentum going. Let's keep that feeling going. So we get shit done in 2024. So before we dive in, tell us more about you, who you are, what you do, and who you serve. I'd love to. Yes. My name is Jess Bergio. And I, she said, I was a beauty entrepreneur for over 22 years. I still dabble a little bit because it is a creative passion of mine. I did try to burn the boats, but that didn't work for me. And so I am living, breathing proof that as an entrepreneur, you can be not only multi-passionate, but you can do a couple of things. If maybe you're like me and have a smidge of ADHD and get bored easy, I'm here to tell you it's okay to do a couple of things. Uh, but sometimes we get we get distracted. And so for me, creating really deep focus on podcasting has been a game changer for me. So now I am a podcast agency owner, along with having my very own podcast show called Unscripted. It's a way that I've found my voice truly in the entrepreneurship space. So, you know, 20 years of building a brick and mortar behind the chair business came pretty easy because it was pre you know, social media. It was that guerrilla marketing. I was young. I was hungry. I was getting out there working nine to nine, you know, six, seven days a week in order to have the six figure plus business that I had. And then, you know, as the years trek on, I had my son about 10, 11 years into my career. And I started to feel like I was messy. And that's what prompted what you see now, but it prompted me to get curious about what else I could be doing that didn't take me away from the house, right? So I started to explore different opportunities and options. The first being a business mastermind with Chris and Lori Harder, which was called Fast Foundations, which was this huge investment that I had never made in myself at that level before, at least with not knowing what the ROI was going to be. So fast forward in the interim of that mastermind, I was able to start my very own salon start the podcast because of course, six months after I opened my, my, my beautiful salon COVID happened. So I was with, (laughs) without the space, I had all the time I'd ever wished for. And I now had, was no more excuses. And I'd watched my mentor start their podcast and thought, man, I really want to start one, but I'm already so busy. I'm not sure what I want my messaging to be. I don't even know who the show would be for, but I figured what the heck let's start with where I'm at, which was an upset hairdresser with a closed salon. We were angry enough. I was frustrated enough. And if you know me or get to know, you'll know, I usually have something to say about everything. So I figured what the heck a podcast sounds like a great place to start creating awareness that I even exist because that was the problem. After that business mastermind, I wanted to come out and say, I'm a business coach for hairdressers, but nobody knew me that. I hadn't taken anybody along the way with me when I started. I just came out of the woods and was like, Hey, who wants to coach with me? And they were like, Hey, who are you? Plus nobody was really following me for that kind of content. So I had to kind of take a few steps back, figure out that I need to create awareness that I even exist, make myself visible. And that's where the podcasting came into play. So about six months later, I got invited to become one of the accountability strategy coaches inside Fast Foundations and Mastermind. And that was my first real experience with helping early stage entrepreneurs start their business. And man, oh man, did I learn a lot. We can deep dive into that if we want to, but it's pertained to like what we're going to talk about today. So in the last two and a half years, I've changed the name of my podcast, which is now called originally it was Beauty Inspires Beauty. And uh, since launched a podcast agency where we help other people connect their voice to their brand by starting a podcast. So long story long, that's uh, kind of my quick and dirty background. 
Yes, but I love hearing others' stories because it really shows you that literally you can build anything from the ground up. You've leveraged all of those past experiences, all of your past knowledge to then build this life that you love. But what I love that you said was you started where you were at. You're like, okay, I know I need to get visible. I need to develop this awareness. And I feel like so often entrepreneurs get stuck in the consumption phase. They're like, oh my gosh, I just need another certification. I just need to take another course. I just need to do this other webinar and then I'll be ready. No, you did the thing. You took massive action. You invested in yourself. You put skin in the game and showed up. And taking action really changed your life. Yeah, no, it did. It really did. And in in the throes of it, you can't always see what the outcome is going to be. And that's where we just have to really honestly have this blind faith that if we just show up and take the action, then the next step will reveal itself. So many of us, of course, women, we always want to know what's the plan. If I do this, what will then happen? And sometimes it's not going to be as clear as we would want it to be. But that's part of fun. So if you can embrace the unknown, if you can em- embrace the fact that you can be drop your level of expectation of how it's going to be and be more open to the magic of how it could be, it's going to allow for the journey to be so much more fluid and fun. And for when you hit roadblocks, which you will, you won't, you won't let them take you out so easy or you won't misconstrue a quote unquote setback or a roadblock as uh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this because everything's going to be a little sticky in the beginning until you do it a few times. You know, I always relate everything to hairdressing. I barely knew how to cut hair when I first graduated school. I definitely didn't know how to highlight anybody's hair and it took reps. It took trying. It took not giving up. It took up a lot of people's hair before I actually crafted the crap that I had that I could then say I was an expert. You know what I mean? So now the things I do with my eyes closed at a warp speed behind the chair are woe to a lot of people. So when I started my podcast, why would I have thought it'd be any different starting something new? Of course, my first few episodes sucked. Of course, I didn't really know what my direction I was doing. I was a terrible interviewer. I said, um, and I talked too much and my tone of voice was a little bit, blah. you know, just so many things, but I studied and I practiced and I got better and I allowed myself to just show up and try in order to see what was possible. Yeah. Yeah. That is so good because we do, we do this as entrepreneurs a lot. When we hit those roadblocks, that's when all the doubt kicks in. That's when all the excuses like, oh my gosh, it would just be easier if I went back to my nine to five, this, that, the other. And before you know it, if you're not aware of those thought trains running through your mind, that's going to stop you. That is going to slow you up. But even when Things don't work out as you planned. It's like you said, it's having that blind faith because you're still gaining knowledge. You're still gaining the the experience because now you realize, all right, well, that doesn't mean that it didn't go according to plan, but that doesn't mean that I'm a failure. I've just learned that that didn't work for me. So honestly, I've learned more from my quote unquote failures than I have those successful times because that's moving me forward. That's catapulting me to the next level of growth, of development, and it's putting in those reps that get the results. And I think a lot of times we're afraid to be beginners, but being a beginner is a beautiful place to be because that's where you get to play. You get to have fun. I mean, when you're starting a podcast for the first time, your audience is smaller, but the bigger and bigger you get, the more and more eyeballs are on. And that brings a whole nother set of challenges and problems and awareness and that sort of thing. So yeah, I think we need to learn to embrace the beginner stage and just focus on putting in those reps and stop comparing ourselves with people that are on chapter 20 of their journey when we're just on that chapter one. I'm interrupting this episode to share a free online networking opportunity for female entrepreneurs. Join me for Coffee Talk every Monday at 1230 Eastern Standard Time and connect with like-minded entrepreneurs leveling up and stepping into the role of the CEO of their business. Details can be found in the show notes. I would love to see you there. Yeah. And I challenge you to reframe anything that might feel like a failure as just a learning. And again, yes. if you do something and it doesn't have the results that you want, how can you go back and refine it 
Or how can you just keep putting it out there, whether it's a podcast or a course or a program or just showing up on social media consistently? You probably won't get any feedback the first, I don't know, couple of years even that you might be showing up on social media, especially if it's as a new version of yourself. So if you're pivoting like Amy and I did, her from the medical, me from the beauty industry, people are not The people that are following you, knowing the old version of you are not going to be as um, actually welcoming or open to the fact that you're now doing or talking about other things. It's going to confuse them because they followed you for something else. So if you already built some sort of following or friend group or whatever on social, and you are now pivoting into something new and different, I would maybe encourage you to start a whole new page or to redirect your focus on a different audience and allow the old version of you to kind of maybe still show up in that way. But remember, those people probably aren't going to conform with you or come with you. And that sometimes is one of the hardest, most challenging things about doing something new, even like a podcast. I still get people that are like, oh, are you still doing your podcast? And I'm like, yeah, they're like, how is that little podcast going? And I'm like, it's great. And you would know that if you listened to it, or if you looked at what was going on on my social media, but thanks for asking. And those kind of comments used to throw me for a loop because I came from an industry that wasn't quote unquote, a real job. Being a hairdresser 22 years ago was what you did when you couldn't figure out what else to do. And I was told that. And then I proved everybody wrong. And then I woke up one day and I was like, okay, I'm done proving everybody wrong. Let's go do something else. That's not a real job podcasting, right? But it can be, and I proved it in that arena and I can prove it over here. But who am I proving it to? To myself now, now at 42 with a 12 year old, I'm doing things more from what light me up and give me purpose. And so I don't look as much for outside validation. Do I still like it? Yes, we are human. And if you're in the service industry, you want some sort of validation or recognition that what you're doing is landing with people and that it's helping people. And so that's why I ask for rating and reviews on my podcast. That's why I try to engage with people on social media and show up marketing my show, because if you have the best podcast, but nobody knows about it, you know, then there's that. But I challenge you to reframe what you might feel like failures or setbacks as ways of refining what you're doing. If you think about anybody that plays sports, if they had a bad game, they don't just quit, right? They go back and see what they could have done better. And then they they go out and they try better the next time, or they take a different approach to it. We are all so different. And like Amy said, if you are trying to compare yourself to someone who maybe doesn't have kids and is running at a speed that there's no way you'd ever be able to run at, that's so unfair to you. It's going to take so much joy out of your journey because you're never going to be able to keep up with her. She has 12 hours of, of the day. She probably gets an eight hours of sleep, unlike us. So you're doing yourself a disservice. So if you're ever going to compare yourself to somebody, make sure they have a life very similar to yours. And then instead of comparing, how can you lock arms with them or maybe pay to get into their world to learn? How are they doing it? How could you better streamline your processes and systems of your life in order to be able to show up like they're doing and integrate the work like Amy was saying and, and get the results that you so deeply desire? Yes. Oh, so much goodness right there. And I love the analogy used with sports. You know, if you have a bad game, you're not just going to quit. You know, yes, it's frustrating, but you don't quit. It's the same thing. Like, listen to how you talk to your kids. It would be like having your child, like learning to walk for the first time and he fell down and you just said, oh, it's okay. You don't ever need to walk. No, stop selling yourself short. It's in doing the action over and over and over. That's where you refine. That's where you get better. That's where you learn what lights you up. What I've started out as and what my business has turned into, it's crazy. It is crazy the pivot that has been made, but it's through taking action. It's in having that blind faith that, you know what? My heart's calling me to this opportunity. I'm going to jump in with both feet and detach from the outcome. Just see what happens. And I just feel so lit up inside by doing that. Have you found that too? That just really like going with the things that light you up and really getting to a point where it's like, you know what, I don't have to prove anything to anyone anymore because I was in the same position. I was asked all the time about my little mommy business, my little podcast. And it's like, okay, this has replaced my salary from when I worked a nine to five, a nine to five that I had to invest a lot of money in to have a piece of paper that said I was qualified to do this job on the wall. Like it's doing just fine, but it's really getting over that need for the constant external validation. It's Chris that says, ego's our biggest overhead. And it really is. If we let that ego in the driver's seat, 
we're going to be facing an uphill battle. Yeah. I mean, you're never going to be happy with what you produce if you're letting your ego lead the way. <clears throat> and if you're a comparing and B just giving up every time things get hard, you know, he was one of my biggest mentors in the, like, if it's not working, how can you go back and refine it? How can you go back and make sure you're checking everything that you're doing against what you should be doing? Right. Like it, it reminds me of when I was a competitive bodybuilder, I knew when I stood on stage that I had done everything possible in my wheelhouse to show up that day. Now, does it, did it look like the girl next to me? I don't know because I didn't have accessibility to compare. I didn't know what she was doing, what time she was waking up, how she was eating, if she had kids. All I knew was what I could do. And that actually helped me show up in such a big way. But unfortunately with social media, we think we know what other people are doing based on what they're showing us. So we are so quick to unqualify ourselves and to dumb down the little wins that we do have and then then tell ourselves that that's not what we should be doing because it's too hard or it's not happening fast enough. And so probably like you with your coaching clients, I've noticed that people don't want to take action on something unless they are totally sure that it's going to work. You know, we just ran our first live course for our podcast today and we had four people show up. It was our very first live course. We had four people show up. Hell yes. So, you know, it's one of those things where we could have been disappointed that we didn't have 40. But, but we have a goal. One day we will have 40 on there, right? We just launched the agency six months ago. We just consistently about four months ago started talking solely about podcasting. I am slowly converting my com content and conversations into more po podcast content strategy. And so it takes time. If I was to look at where I was in my previous business as to where I am now, they're not, it, I didn't make a lateral move. I had to go back to the beginning. And I really struggled with that when I, when I was deciding to leave hairdressing and move into a new career, it held me back so much thinking I've built this big business. It, how could I possibly start at the bottom somewhere else again? It had to at least be a lateral move. Otherwise I wasn't doing it. And so I got in my own way so many times because I was a little bit brainwashed into thinking that, well, if you're trading time for money, that's not a real business. And if you have to do things that aren't scalable, that's not a real business. And I'm here to tell you, you have to do the unscalable things for as long as humanly possible. And then some until there are things that you can scale out or diversify out or hire out, but you need to know what works in your business before you try to skip those steps and go over to scaling and diversifying and hiring teams. You need to know what you're even doing before you do any of that. And I, I was kind of taught to the ladder of hire before you're ready and, you know, do this and do that, but that's okay. I had to learn things backwards in order for me to now teach them, which is great because I now have this like reverse engineer of, Hey, you got to create awareness that you even exist. We got to establish the foundation of your personal brand first. My preferred platform is podcasting because I can double down, triple down, quadruple down the content that I put onto my social media. Now I probably get 90% of my content from podcasting for my social media. It gives me tons of things to talk about. It gives me access to people like I'm doing right now with you that I wouldn't otherwise get 20, 30, 40 minutes to pick their brain. And it's just opened up a whole new world for me. And like I said, at the beginning, it's helped me connect my voice to my brand, which I didn't really have a brand when I first went from hairdressing over into the online space. And so, you know, none of it's felt easy. <laughs> and just like Amy said, there were so many times where I was like, go back to what, you know, you know how to stand behind the chair and make money. You've always been really good at that. And I still, to this day, I'm not going to lie. I still struggle with the thought of just go back to what's easy. Just go back to what's easy. But I remember, like I said, with the scissors, this will eventually feel easy at least it will feel easier. And if I can just find the joy and the excitement in it, that's worth it to me. Yeah. And if you think about it, it's just primal. It's our brain's way of trying to keep us safe. When something's yep. uncomfortable, we go back to that default mode. And so our brain's always looking for comfort. So if you're feeling any of these feelings, if you're listening to this episode, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, wait, this is, this is normal. Yes. Yes. You just have to have the awareness. So you're not letting it stop you. That's the key because we're all still getting in our heads, but I believe, you know, you and I have been able to develop the awareness. So we don't let it spiral out of control because there's certainly days where I'm like, you know what, my first business that was extremely lucrative. I made a ton of money, but I wasn't 
happy. I wasn't satisfied. It wasn't what I loved. But what I love is what I'm doing now. I'm empowering and educating my clients to achieve the success that they desire on their terms with a life first approach. And we need to celebrate every single win along the way. I think a lot of times we're so focused on the hustle of, I need this. Okay, well, wait, I hit this many downloads. Now I need this many. Now I need this many. We're always moving that that goalpost, that end game. But the reality is we need to celebrate every single win along the way. And something else you said too was taking the time to build that solid foundation. And I see so many women doing this too. They're like, but everybody else is doing this. I need the podcast and I need a blog and I need you know to be on all the social media platforms. No, no. Start simple. Find the one that you lights you up that lights you up and double down on that. And I'm like you, I love podcasting. I love it. I would have never thought in a million years I'd ever have a podcast, but it's being able to link arms with women like you. We get together. Our mutual audiences get to hear the messages. We get to bring more incredible women into our worlds because it's in linking arms together that we create an even bigger impact. I was on a walk yesterday with my husband and kids and I was like, you know what? Like, I just thought of this analogy. It's like, you know, you go to a sporting sporting event, you stand in the middle of a football stadium, the football stadium's empty, you yell. Okay, you know, it really doesn't sound that loud. You sell out that stadium, you fill those stands. The roar of that stadium is so loud. I mean, the decibels are off the chart. That's the impact that we can make together. And podcasting is such an incredible way to do that. And that is something that you are an absolute pro in. So for those of our listeners that are like, yes, I love this. I'm thinking about starting a podcast. I need to know more. Like, how can we get into your world? What services do you offer? Tell us all the things. Oh my gosh. Okay. So if you are for one second being like, I don't I'm like, do I need a podcast? Now these two co- girls are trying to talk me into a, getting a podcast because they seem to like it. Trust me. If you like to have thoughtful conversation, if you find yourself wanting to share information, but you're not quite sure what platform to do it on a podcast is the jam because it will then create you so much other content. Those blogs she talked about, you can take your transcriptions from your podcast episodes, SEO them up a little bit, add them to your website. So you're just driving more and more new traffic, new eyes to your website. If you don't have a website yet, start with the podcast website. It's one of those trickle down things that is literally, it's a game changer. And when I started, I knew that, but I hadn't really taken full advantage of it. So I have an episode on my podcast unscripted called why should I start a podcast? So I would challenge you guys to start there. I'll give Amy the link. She can put it in the show notes and it's a really great short episode. Listen to it at 1.25 speed because then you'll just rip right through it. It's really where I was calling people up into their authority. Because I find so many of us are like playing small to the tune of nobody wants to hear from me. What would I have to say? I'm just a this. I'm just a hairdresser. I'm just a mom. What I want to talk about someone, 10 other people are already talking about. How am I going to bring a unique, fresh perspective to this topic? Well, I challenge you. If you want to talk about something that 10 or 20 other people are talking about, hello, the market's proven that it's a topic people want to hear. And Nobody can tell it like you. Your voice is what makes you so powerful. The way you speak, your tone, your delivery, it's unique to you. Nobody can take that away from you. Amy and I could talk about the exact same topics every single day. We could literally have the same transcribed script and we're going to tangent off on so many different ways because we have different lived experiences. So we're both moms. We both want to help women. Does that mean I shouldn't have a podcast? No. And so I think so many people are scared of what they feel like will be so much more work. But in reality, if you streamline your processes and systems, which we can help you do with our agency or just the course or google.com, if you really want to go at it on your own, you can figure out a way to take the podcast and drip it down into all other areas of your business. You can monetize, you can drive traffic, you can do so much with it. So go listen to that episode if you're interested or you're even curious about starting a podcast. It'll let you know either way. But generally, we like to create content the way we like to consume it. So Amy was like, we do 20 minute episodes. My moms are busy. They don't, they don't have time for an hour. They usually can only get in 20 minutes. Perfect. So she creates something for them, right? She knows that's what her people want. So that's what she's creating. That's great. That's a great place to start. You can even create shorter episodes that maybe in one day a month, you could batch out three, four, five, six episodes. It's not going to take you a lot of time. 
You don't even have to edit them if you don't want. Just put them up raw, messy, and real. You don't even need an intro or an outro, but you can go from as basic as you want to as high level of a show as you want to create. So if you are just starting, know that you can tweak it as you go. You can change it as you grow, right? Because your guests are going to grow or your audience is going to grow, but nothing will get you closer to your audience than a podcast. And as you start to share, I think you'll start to open up and blossom into this person who's feeling more and more comfortable and confident to share the deeper stories because you know, the more vulnerable you get, I know that's kind of a tag word these days, the more people will relate to you. And the more we can relate to people, the deeper our community connection builds. Therefore, your audience turns into, you know, raving fans of people who just want to be in your energy. Yes. They just want to be around a positive light of inspiration, motivation, transformation, whatever that looks like. And so we help you break that down in the course. We have a course called Start Your Damn Podcast, where we actually just launched it this week. Uh, we will be running it again at the end of November, and then hopefully again every other month in 2024. So if you are curious, just just hit me up, DM me, be like, I don't know, I'm I'm thinking about it, but I'm scared. Let me know that you're scared. I was scared too. Remember, I told you we did two freaking years and watched everybody else get going on the early train. And I waited too long for Instagram. Podcasting is still fairly new. And if you're somebody who is craving consistency and they're craving some base stability in their business, a podcast can give you that along with showcasing you as the go-to person for whatever it is that you want to talk about. So now I've established myself as the go-to person for podcasting. And I don't know about you, but I'm here for that. Yes, I love it. I love it. And there's so much like in the way of AI technology too, that can even oh make it so much easier. Like you said, it can be as simple or as complicated as you make it out to be. And that's the cool part about podcasting. It's kind of like the wild west. It's like, there's really like no like hard, fast set rules. It's just, you get to show up as yourself. And that's what draws people in. They want to hear you. They want to get to know you. And that really collapses that buying cycle too, because they're learning from you. So that's building your authority. They're building the no like trust path factor because you're going to draw in the people that like listening to you and they're going to continue listening to you versus if they listen to a couple episodes you're like you know she's not my vibe that's okay that's the beautiful part and i think that's where we sell ourselves so short it's been such a powerful asset for me and yeah having a podcast has completely changed my life so you guys if you are interested at all go listen to that episode get into jess's world she is truly the queen of podcasting. Jess, this was amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And until next time, mamas, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 